Welcome to the Logistics Point interviews. I'm Nick Bougiou, uh, and today I'm joined by Louisa Husgood, who is the Digital and Strategy Director at Biz Henderson. And today we are talking about logistics and the food industry. Louisa, thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you, Nick, for inviting me. Looking forward to good, good, good chat. And when we're talking about the food industry, which was something because of COVID very important, what do you think the last 18 months, um, how do you think they changed the food industry and the supply chain in the food industry as a whole? Well, I mean, if you think about 18 months, 18 months have been COVID, COVID and COVID, <laughs> and, and literally a little bit of Brexit in there as well um so you know we it, it, it we can talk forever about um you know all the things that have happened in terms of the the routes to market routes to customers that have changed um actually internally how logistics have been restricted and they've had to change and, and flex um and if you think from a brexit point of view the, the the supply challenges the rules and regulations i don't actually think there's any part of logistics for food that hasn't changed in the last 18 months um if you were going to look at it holistically you'd actually say yep there's some avenues that have, have closed or that have been so challenged that actually that 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 hasn't worked but then equally there's been some new avenues for the ones that have either taken an opportunity or for the ones where they've been able to pivot and change quite quickly some new avenues have opened and everybody else in the middle is just trying to muddle through <laughs> and, and, and make the best of what I think has, um, you know, it, it's been a change. You've had e-com absolutely accelerate by sort of five to 10 years. You've had hospitality completely closed down in, in effect. You've had grocery where we went from sort of toilet roll um, crisis to actually now Brexit and not being able to have any tomatoes and lettuce. And then you've got um, um, the, the whole sort of supply and global shipping. So there was just a whole host of stuff that um, a perfect storm of things that have sort of been happening where it's supply challenge and customer expectation have all clashed. Um, and it's certainly been, I'm not going to think anybody thinks it's been an exciting time. I think it's certainly been a very challenging, complex um, and a huge time of change. And uh, yes, it's been challenging and probably we can talk a lot about the negatives, but in all of these, mm -hmm. what do you think is the trend or the thing that's going forward that is positive, that is good about the industry? Absolutely. Well, and, and that's why I say it has opened avenues. I think it's, um, and something that I was saying sort of quite early on within COVID was, what's that quote? Um, isn't it about crisis is the mother of all invention? I think it's made people realise that um, actually you can just do stuff. You can just make change. You didn't need to have years of, of, of thinking about it and decision points because actually people had to react and do it. Probably not quite with a sticking plaster that, that sort of COVID required, but I think it's potentially accelerated some of that that may be risk taking, some of that decision making um, in terms of, of, of a, um, an approach. I think it's made people think about how flexible they need to be. Um, and, and, and it has, there isn't just one set way, you know, that sort of swap from, from shop to recon, for example, or the shop of hospitality, or even if it's that sort of flexing the boundaries of what was traditional competitors. You know, you've got, you've got B2B, you've got Heinz and Coca-Cola dealing with end customers now. You've got brand new entrants in who weren't here before. Um, you've, got, you've got sort of um, people pushing the boundaries and competitors from all over the place. And I think it's made people realize they can't just say still that that comfy world isn't there anymore. And actually they needed to be open to, to change and to adapt. Um, and it's forced it. It's forced people to, to need that sort of change mindset. And, and also to be open to probably quite creative solutions and ones where you can just go with it and test and learn a little bit of leap of faith. Now, OK, probably as we settle down, there needs to be a level of governance around that. But it's about keeping that essence. And you mentioned flexibility, uh, mm. which has been, I think, in a way, has been hard for a lot of businesses at the moment. And when it comes to the food industry in particular, maybe, do you think that yep. the supply chain was able to be flexible enough and what would be the steps that they need to take? Um, 
was it flexible enough i mean yeah you can always you can always go back and look and and, and look at the negatives i think you know um some maybe took longer than others to, to sort of be able to to react and change um most people got there um i think it was um it was about speed, but it was also about managing expectations at the same time. Some of that flexibility um, comes from being able to, to know what you're trying to get to, but be able to go, and this I can do, and this is the bit I can't do, actually. Um, and whether that's managing customers' expectations, suppliers, even internal governance and, you know, and internal boards, I think there is a bit about being brave enough to sort of go, right, this this is where the priorities are. So I think, for example, it's um, the, the sort of whole COVID has 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 sort of pushed that challenge over a really wide range because do you know what? We couldn't get a lot of it. And so some of that may well have been, been sort of historic um, and, and probably shouldn't have been there. So it sort of maybe forced some of those decisions um, to, to sort of help the supply chain. In terms of going forward, when you think about flexibility going forward, I'd say... There's probably five areas that um, that um, I'd say were really key to think about. I think it's about really watching and understanding the customer, um, however fast they're moving. But it's it's having that mechanisms to be able to really understand what the customers always wanted to do. I'd love to be one step ahead, but actually let's at least watch them. Secondly, I think it's about thinking about solutions that are not specific to one problem actually, how can a solution be a bit more flexible so that you can reuse it, readapt it to something that's happened? Um, and actually, it might be that you have to design it slightly differently so that it can flex and change. And sometimes it's not one square box. You have to have one with sort of different edges and things. I think the third area then would be about modular. So, yeah, and, and this isn't just, you know, people tend to think of that in terms of a warehouse or automation, but I think modular is in terms of how you add services, how you add um, different systems and layers, how you actually might just add capacity because you don't know what's going to be there. And if you built everything all at once and then it doesn't come through, then effectively you've got the proverbial white elephant. Um, so it's about how do you de-risk um, you know, effectively, it's lower lower investment and lower capital and change, um, usually faster to implement. And then knowing where your trigger points are to have to add some more in. Um, so are you adding it in because you're growing? Are you adding it in because it's peak? Um, so it's about sort of having some modular and some building blocks that can grow and flex with your business. The fourth thing I'd say is around collaboration. And we did see quite a lot of that in COVID. And I think that's pushed some of the boundaries. I think that sort of helped people culturally because that's, to be fair, where most of the boundary was. Okay, a little bit of competition rule, but actually it was a lot of it was mindset of not wanting to work together. So I think that's certainly an area in terms of creating flexibility, collaborating with suppliers, with 3PLs, with actually other parties within logistics is going to help that, that flexibility because when Europe and somebody else is down, that can sort of help one another. Um, and then the fifth area, I would say, and it's a huge, huge can of worms, but we've got to mention it is data. I think people have realized how much data they need to sort of be flexible. The, the more you know, the faster and easier it is to flex sometimes because um, you're sort of anticipating it. So I'd say those were the five things. It's about understanding the customer. It's about sort of flexible solutions, not set ones. It's modular, it's collaboration, and it's data. And when we are talking about the food industry, it has so many pieces in it. Do you think that it is possible for us to say, this is where we are going, this is what the future for the food industry and the logistics and supply chain of retail and uh, restaurants is going to be? Um, that's a really, really interesting question. I think, And as you say, sort of food industry is... Is it on supply and manufacture? Is it the grocers and the supermarkets? Is it hospitality? Is it online and e-com? As you say, it's got so many facets, hasn't it? I think if I was going to pick out some of the overriding trends for all of those, and some will apply more than other, I think there is definitely something about local localization, whether it's from a sourcing point of view, whether it's where customers are, whether it's about actually how logistics are going to have to physically set up a network. I think there's going to be something about physically close to a customer, whether it's a mid customer, an end customer or something. There's got to be something about geographical, physical proximity and that sort of localization. Um, I think, and this is where it's going to be um, a, a, a bit more tricky, but the whole urbanization, actually, the, the congregation around cities, 
we're seeing it of, of, of you know people want deliveries for grocery within 30 minutes sort of thing and we're seeing it in a lot of countries in the world and it really will be big conurbations it'll be big cities but that sort of urbanization and different customer needs there compared to effectively the rest of the country i think that will certainly play out in the food sector far more than maybe other ones um, and then I think the last one, and it's going to sound a bit cliche, is I think if COVID's taught us anything, it's about change will come. Change is always constant. But can we take that sort of mindset of um, accepting that change will be there, accepting that things won't always be perfect and we'll have to sort of flex and just go with it sometimes um, and have and continue to develop your organization's culture as well as actually some of the physical and system to allow that change to keep happening because it's i think it was the ones that maybe got caught unaware that couldn't pivot fast enough that sort of you know not quite not quite being able to sort of make it through i think it's that sort of um, openness to change well thank you very much for today and for the insights and for everyone who would like to learn more you can find more in the description down below thank you very much